One of the biggest problems with older CD-based systems is that their disk drives will inevitably fail. For my PlayStation, this has already happened twice, requiring a laser swap to regain functionality. For my Sega Saturn, the same problem has proven harder to deal with as replacement lasers for the system are far less common and pot tweaks only work for so long. Thankfully, optical drive emulators for the Saturn have become a common sight with four different options becoming available to aid aging systems with dead and dying disk drives. While ODEs have typically relied purely on SD card storage or USB for games up to this point, the Terra Onion mode offers the ability to use either with the added ability to utilize a SATA hard drive or SSD. With the installation of the Terra Onion mode into my system, I have been able to enjoy my tiny library of Saturn games all over again. Because of the variety of different storage options available for the mode, I have been curious as to which offers the best performance for the price. SD, USB, and SSD can offer faster performance than a mechanical hard drive, but they cost far more for larger capacities. SSD prices are a bit more reasonable comparatively, but can still be a bit on the high side depending on the amount of storage you are looking for. The most cost-effective option is certainly the traditional mechanical hard drive, but will it offer significantly reduced performance to take it out of the running? After two weeks of testing each option, the results are interesting to say the least. Before we get into the results, let's take a quick look at the four storage options used for the tests. First up is a 128GB SanDisk Micro SDXC card with a max read speed of up to 120MB a second. Next is a 512GB PNY Elite X USB 3.1 flash drive with a max speed of up to 200MB a second. The fastest storage used in this test is the 500GB Otherworld Computing Mercury Electra 6G SSD provided by Otherworld Computing for testing purposes across numerous applications. The OWC SSD provides read speeds up to 533 megabytes a second and like the previous two options, instant access times. The last and slowest storage medium used for testing goes to the 1TB 5400 RPM SATA 2 Hitachi mechanical hard drive with a max speed of up to 105 megabytes a second. While read speeds aren't that much slower than the other options used, it is the seek times of the platter that are most concerning when it comes to speed. But enough about the storage options, let's dive into the results. Before getting into any games, let's take a look at how the mode menu itself handles across the variety of storage methods. For these tests, I have the mode set up to use cover art as it just looks super pretty, even if it is a bit slower. For the initial menu loading, timing begins once the Sega logo on the Saturn disappears, and ends once the first two rows of cover art appear. For this test, times were calculated five times across each storage option, and the average time is the final result. Each of the four methods offer a time within milliseconds of each other, making it pretty indistinguishable to the human eye, which is the fastest. According to the raw numbers, though, the USB and SSD lead the pack, with the SD card bringing up the rear, with the hard drive managing to barely edge it out. One of the coolest features about the mode for me is its ability to display a game synopsis and screenshots when a title is selected. It gives you just that much more of a polished experience, but it does take a second to load the info when used. Yes, it literally takes a second every time you choose a game. Regardless of the storage medium, each game selected will display its info in just a second. Just as an added note here, when starting a game, it loads up instantly every time. The slowest part of using cover art with the mode comes from selecting new rows of titles and waiting for the cover art to load. As with the mode's initial load, each new row of cover art loads in at roughly the same speed, with it being practically indistinguishable to my eyes. As for the numbers, the SSD comes out on top for this one, if just barely. The Saturn version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a curiosity to me, and one I am happy I could finally obtain. Despite some limitations compared to the PS1 version, I think it is a pretty cool take on the game, especially with its different playable characters. For this test, I measured how long it took to load after selecting a character, and how long on average it took to load in five different areas of gameplay. As with the mode menu, results are again about the same for each storage method across both tests, with results coming down to the millisecond. The Saturn version of Command & Conquer is a great port of the original DOS version of the game, and runs better on the system than it ever did on our old PC from back in the day. To test the loads on this title, I measured the time it would take to load a mission after the briefing screen was closed across 10 different levels. The average time of the loads is the final result. Again, the results have barely any differences, and nothing that is very perceptible to the human eye. Technically, the SSD is the fastest, and the hard drive is the slowest. Time to check out my favorite controller test game, Mega Man X4. The Saturn version of X4 has some interesting differences from the PS1 release, including some added heat effects and higher quality music at the trade-off of transparency effects. For this title, I tested the time it took to get to the character select screen and a number of levels and mid-level loads. The average of the level loads is our final result. While results are vastly the same across each storage medium once again, the SD card does manage to go below 7 seconds on average for level loads. 
Panzer Dragoon 2 is a fantastic game, and if you haven't played it, you should. That being said, I didn't spend a ton of time testing this one, instead I did an average time of how long it takes to load the first level. Timing starts when the initial cutscene fades to black, and it ends when the Destiny Begins text vanishes. Results across the board for this test are again, very negligible. I was recently able to pick up a Japanese copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga for only $30 and have been eagerly waiting to play it. Because it is all in Japanese, that is proving hard to do at the moment as I don't have the time needed to translate the text as I play right now. So for this test, I am once again averaging a few loads found at the beginning of the game up until the first flying section. Panzer Dragoon Saga is a quick loading game, well, at least in the beginning, and it makes me excited for when I can finally dive into it. That being said, the four storage options offer little difference from each other once again. Capcom's classic horror game will always have a home in my Saturn collection. One of the iconic moments of the game is its door loading screen animations. While these screens are fairly hard coded into the game, there are times just before and after that can be affected by storage speed. For this test, I played the game for 30 minutes across each storage method and averaged the time it took to get through all the doors. Loads are again within milliseconds of each other, with this being one of the smallest variations yet. The mechanical hard drive does manage to edge out the SD card again in this test though. Sonic 3D Blast is an interesting take on Sonic, and I actually kind of like it. That being said, I don't want to waste a lot of time testing this one, so here are the average loads of going from the title screen to the main menu and loading the first level. Overall, USB takes the crown on this one, but it is very negligible. The Saturn version of Street Fighter Alpha 2 is a joy to play, especially when compared to the SNES release. There are a number of loads to contend with, however. For this test, I measured the time it takes to get to the character select screen, average loads of getting into fights during an arcade playthrough, and the average time it takes to get to the victory screen after each fight. For the first time, we are seeing level load results that are varying by the second instead of milliseconds, with the SSD coming out on top. Character select and post-fight screens are all still fairly negligible, though. The original Tomb Raider has such an interesting history with the Sega Saturn. As such, I have always wanted it, and it remains a permanent piece of my Saturn collection. For testing the game, I measured loads of the game's first three levels and averaged the results. Results for this one were interesting compared to everything else we have seen so far. While the SD card, hard drive, and SSD are fairly similar, the USB drive is coming in around 3 seconds slower on average for the title. Not a result I expected to see considering the results from every other test conducted so far. So as you can see, there is virtually no difference in load times across the four usable options on the Terra Onion mode. Sometimes one method will do better on one particular title and do worse on another. But why is this the case? Well, the Sega Saturn utilizes a 2x speed CD-ROM drive with a transfer rate of up to 150 to 300 kilobytes a second. And this is the bus that the mode is operating on. Because of this hardware limit, the speed of your storage medium is going to have a minimal impact on overall load speeds as long as it could go faster than the original drive's 300 kilobyte limit. Thanks to increased seek times on modern drives and instant access of flash storage, there is still a slight improvement over the stock CD-ROM drive. So where does this leave the question of which storage medium is best to use on the mode? Well, anything that fits your price and capacity needs, honestly. If you are only planning to load up your mode with US or European titles, they will fit onto a 128GB drive without issue. If you want to have the Japanese-only library, you need to have over 500GB of available space. For all three regions, you will definitely want a 1TB option. And this is where price comes into play. You can usually find a 128GB SDXC card or SSD for around $20 while a USB flash drive will go as low as $15. Again, all great options if you're only looking to use a subset of the Saturn's library. The real price consideration comes from the higher capacity drives. A 1TB SSD will usually set you back $100 or more, while a 1TB micro SDXC card or flash drive will easily break $200 or upward. This is where the mechanical hard drive can take center stage as 1TB options can be had for around $45 and as you have seen, it doesn't offer a subpar experience. One thing Terra Onion has made note of regarding mechanical hard drives is that they might run too hot for certain models of the Saturn without an addition of a fan to circulate air. The drive I use barely got warm during this testing process so it will be a case by case situation for sure. Since I have the laser bear mode mount for my Model 1 Saturn, I plan to add a small 30mm fan to the system anyway, just to be safe. No matter what storage option I intend to use. Regardless of what method you decide to use for yourself, I am glad that the Terra Onion mode gives us the option of choice. Especially at higher storage capacities. So there we have it, the load time differences between all four available storage options on the Terra Onion mode. When I first started doing this testing, I expected to see something a little bit differently, but then as I actually thought about what I was doing, I realized that, yeah, this makes perfect sense, so...
it's fascinating to say the least, but what did you all think? Like, did you expect to see these results, or did you already expect this to be the outcome, just based on technical know-how? Either way, it was a fun test to perform, and I hope the results will help other mode owners out there decide which storage option they want to pick, because some are really expensive, and some aren't. But anyways, let's go ahead and call the video there. So as always, thank you all so very much for watching. It really helps support the channel for all of you to spend this much time here. And I am so grateful to all of you for that. We are on the push towards 10,000 subs and we are getting closer every day. Thanks to all of your support. So thank you all so very much for that. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button and that like dislike button, just depending how much you like today's video. And if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube or click on the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. For as little as a dollar a month, you could directly support the channel, which in turn helps me bring content just like this to you. As always, I am just so grateful for your consideration and for all my current champions. Thank you all so much for your ongoing and continued support. You guys have been keeping this going for a long time, and I am so grateful to all of you for that. So until next time, all of my fantastic internet people, have a wonderful day, and we will see you all back next video.